Welcome to today's class. Uh, today, we are going to uh, define the Dirichlet polygon of a Fuchsian group uh, with respect to any point in H uh, with a trivial stabilizer in uh, gamma. Uh, and we are going to prove that it is a hyperbolically convex, locally finite fundamental domain for our Fuchsian group. Uh, so you see the point is that we have been establishing uh, several properties uh, for of, uh, fundamental domains of Fuchsian groups uh, and uh, even on their extra hypothesis like uh, local finiteness uh, or uh, uh, hyper, uh, hyperbolic convexity. Um, but so far, we have not yet proved that uh, every Fuchsian group admits a uh, fundamental domain, uh, let alone um, locally finite or hyperbolically convex. Uh, so, with the, in, in today's class, uh, with the Dirichlet polygon, uh, we're going to uh, uh, prove that fundamental domains exist and, uh, and that actually uh, we can always take a convex, locally finite uh, fundamental domain, that uh, such uh, objects always exist, um, no matter which uh, Fuchsian group you give me. Um, so, uh, all throughout today's class, gamma is going to be uh, a functional group, as um, as, as uh, usual. Um, and given a functional group, uh, we know that the fixed points of uh, elliptic elements of gamma uh, do not accumulate in uh, H, so they they uh, they form a, a a discrete subset of H, but not only discrete, but it, uh, it, it, a, a subset that doesn't even accumulate in H, not only in, in, in itself. Okay. So uh, this means that that uh, uh, we can say that almost all points in H have a, a trivial stabilizer. Right. So we take one such point. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a point not fixed by any elliptic element of gamma. Mm -hmm. um, an exercise would be uh, to write down uh, some algorithm uh, that produces, that you see as, as input uh, takes ga uh, gamma and as an output produces at least one such element. Um, okay, so, so, so this, is, this is going to be our hypothesis all throughout uh, uh, today's class. Um, okay, now for for each uh, for each uh, element of the group, for each non-identity element of the Fuchsian group gamma, uh, we denote by L gamma W uh, the bisector uh, between W and uh, the image of W on the on the D element gamma. So it's the set of all points uh, in H that are equidistant uh, from W and gamma of W. Um, this is a, a, a shortest curve. It's a geodesic in, uh, in H. Um, this is, that, that this is a, a shortest curve in H is easily seen when um, W and gamma of W are Symmetric with respect to the to the imaginary axis. That, that's that, that's quite easy to see. So um, uh, so when when uh, when um, W and gamma of W have the same imaginary part, and uh, the real part of gamma of W is minus the real part of uh, W, uh, and once you see it, in, in that case, when, when W and gamma of W are symmetric with respect to the imaginary axis, uh, you, you, uh, you can prove it in general by simply uh, taking your two points uh, and sending them with, uh, with some uh, Mobius transformation to the situation I just described. Okay. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and then uh, mapping it back. Right? So uh, this one is actually a, a shortest curve in H. Uh, perpendicular uh, or orthogonal to the shortest curve uh, joining W with uh, uh, gamma of W. 
Okay, likewise, uh, we denote by H gamma of W uh, this uh, half, this open half plane. Uh -huh. So, so you see, so you have a, somehow the situation is that you have W, you have gamma of W, you have uh, you have L of gamma W so, uh, somewhere, uh, and then uh, this H gamma w is is the open half uh, plane uh, the open half hyperbolic plane uh, that contains a uh, double um and here is uh, an alternative description which you see you can th th this uh, inequality is equivalent to this inequality by uh, applying um uh, gamma inverse and and uh, by using the fact that this distance is equal to the distance uh, between their images on the any element in any given element of uh, of the fusion group. Okay. Um, right. So 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 what we have uh, done is uh, we have uh, defined for each element of the fusion group certain um, half plane uh, containing uh, dots. Right, that kind of separates W from its image under under the under the element uh, of gamma. Okay, and uh, the Dirichlet polygon uh, of gamma with uh, with respect to that point W is uh, the is the is uh, defined as the intersection of all those uh, half planes. Um, so this is a, 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 a Quite a uh, simple uh, definition, at least conceptually. Um, okay, and uh, there are some uh, basic properties uh, that we are uh, going to uh, state now. So uh, this is what I uh, I already said, and I already sketched how uh, to prove, uh, namely that this uh, this bisector between W and gamma of W is a short curve. Uh, perpendicular to the shortest curve that joins W with uh, gamma of W. Um, this uh, this uh, half plane is uh, convex and open in H. So this this uh, I will leave uh, as an exercise. It's it's not a hard exercise. Um, okay. So so uh, again, think think about the the situation where. W and gamma of W are symmetric with respect to the imaginary axis, and then uh, and then uh, prove it there, and then map it back. Mm -hmm. So that that, that 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 I think is a uh, a way of of uh, showing this uh, second property. Um, the, 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 this uh, third property is a certain s certain uh, um, type of symmetry. Between uh, between uh, point in H and with uh, with W, right? So namely, uh, namely, if you uh, if you take a point in H not fixed by uh, any non-identity element, um, and then uh, here here maybe I should say I should write maybe mu. Right. Um, it turns out that a, a, a Z is in H gamma of W if and only if W is in H gamma inverse of Z. Right. And uh, the, the 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 proof is kind of just just to play around with this inequality and uh, with the the the, the 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 equivalent inequality. So I I uh, I leave it to you as a, it's an easy exercise. Uh, and consequently. Uh, you know, when, when you consider all possible gammas, and hence also all possible gamma inverses, uh, then you obtain, uh, and then here, I mean, here it's okay. I, I should, I, uh, I don't have to change, uh, um, gamma, uh, you know, I don't, don't have to replace, uh, the letter gamma, but I do it anyway. Um, that, that Z, is a, a point in the Dirichlet polygon which center W, if and only if W is a point in the Dirichlet polygon which center Z. Right? So there is kind of some sort of inter, uh, in, exchangeability or interchangeability. Um, 
Okay. Uh, one more, if you take any isometry uh, of the hyperbolic plane, uh, the image of this half plane under, under that isometry uh, is equal to this, uh, this half plane, um, this half plane, but now uh, between, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the half plane determined by uh, uh, the bisector between nu of w and uh, this, el this element applied to nu of w. And, and he, this, again, this, 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 uh, this, this is an easy exercise. Um, and consequently, uh, you know, by collecting all the gammas in, uh, in, the, in the function group, um, we, see, we see that, that if I take any isometry, of the hyperbolic plane, and I apply it to the Dirichlet polygon center in that W, uh, what I obtain is uh, the Dirichlet polygon centered at nu of W um, for this other Fuchsian group, which is uh, clearly uh, isomorphic to, to gamma. Um, all right, in particular, when, uh, when the isometry is actually an element of the Fuchsian group, uh, you see this just becomes a gamma itself. So, so uh, uh, applying an element of gamma gives me the Dirichlet polygon, again for gamma, but at the image, simply at the image. Um, okay, uh, so these are easy, uh, easy exercises. Uh, eight, that you see, if, if you take any sequence uh, of, uh, of, of uh, elements of gamma, Without repetition, right? So, so of pairwise distinct elements of gamma, um, the distance between W and gamma n of W goes to infinity, uh, as n tends to infinity, right? And and this is uh, this a this property is a consequence of the fact that the or the orbit of W on the the Fuchsian group. Uh, does not accumulate in H, uh, which we already proved uh, earlier in the course. Um, okay, and uh, and um, finally, uh, if you give me any compact set, any compact subset of the hyperbolic plane, uh, and I ask how many of these bisectors it intersects, it actually moves, uh, uh, the answer is only finitely many. Right? So any given compact subset meets only finitely many uh, bisectors. Um, this nine is uh, is a consequence of uh, eight, uh -huh. and uh, I uh, I leave it as a, as an exercise. Right? So so the kind of the hint maybe is. Um, uh, to consider the distance, be, the distance from W to this shortest curve. Right? If you will, the the, the minimum, uh, the infimum of the distances uh, from W to the points uh, in this set, right? um, and see, and then then use use. This. Um, I mean, because the, the distance from W to, uh, to this set should be half uh, of the distance from W to a uh, gamma of W, right? And that's, that's where then you, are, you, are, you, are, you apply this in order to reduce a uh, nine. Okay, so I, I, uh, I, I, uh, I leave it uh, for you uh, as an exercise. And Okay, and now we are going to use all of these uh, properties. We are going to use uh, this lemma to prove that the Dirichlet polygon with the center uh, in W is a hyperbolically convex, locally finite fundamental domain for gamma. Uh, so uh, don't forget that we took W to be uh, a point with a trivial stabilizer in gamma, right? So that it is not fixed by any elliptic element of uh, gamma. 
Um, so the, 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 there is an easy part, which is that uh, uh, it is convex, and it is so because uh, uh, by this lemma, we know that, that each of these uh, half planes is uh, convex. Uh, so uh, the Lipstead polygon is convex. Right? Because it is the intersection of a, of a convex edge. Um, okay, now now to prove that it is open, well, that is not as trivial as uh, convexity because um, uh, we know that each of these is, is open, but you see in see in this intersection there may be infinitely many um, intersecting factors, right? So so. And 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 an infinite intersection of open sets may fail to be open. Right? So we have to uh, uh, use a, 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 a other, some other argument, actually valid. Uh -huh. And so so to to prove this, uh, we take uh, a point in the ridiculous polygon. Uh, we want to 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 see that there is uh, some uh, ball around it, fully contained in. Uh, in, uh, in in D, uh -huh. so in, in 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 D gamma W, mm -hmm. so so uh, take any compact uh, disk centered at at uh, the point, any 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 right. So so um, we're going to to to, uh, to to perform certain basic uh, analysis and uh, and we're going to shrink D. Mm -hmm. That that's somehow what I we're about to do. So so you see. Um, these two sets uh, are finite, right? Uh, because uh, uh, of uh, this property nine, right? So uh, if you take, you see, this set is 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 uh, clearly compact. So this set is uh, finite, um, and then and and my compact this V is uh, well is compact. So this set is fine. Now, uh, since v, since, since uh, z is here, we certainly have, you see, set is not in any of these bisectors, right? Because, uh, I mean, being, you know, belonging to, to the Dirichlet polygon means that uh, for no matter which element uh, small gamma you take uh, here, non uh, which non-identity element uh, of gamma you take, um, uh, belonging here means that for, for any such element that you want to take, for any such element that you want to take, the distance from Z to W is Strictly smaller than the, than the distance from Z to gamma of W, right? So, in particular, Z cannot be in uh, in in uh, in this in this bisector, right? Because in, on the bisector, I have a quantity. So, uh, this uh, this is not only finite, but it is uh, uh, actually uh, empty. Once once you just uh, look at uh, you know unravel. What what it what it means to belong to this intersection? Um, okay, so this is actually empty. Good, uh, and then you see this this is finite, right? So so only finitely many elements of gamma have uh, uh, this property. Um, so somehow the the picture to have in mind is that uh, some somehow uh, here is Z, here is my compact disk. Uh, and it intersects some of the bisectors, maybe. Right? Um, I don't know. Uh, somehow, let's say, yeah. Um, okay, but since it's finitely many of them, I can uh, shrink D and obtain a new smaller disk, not meeting any of of of, of those finitely many bisectors. Um, okay. And, and then, and, and you see for this new D, for this new D, I actually have, uh, 
that the, that the corresponding set B is uh, empty. Uh, okay, but so you see uh, Z is in D and, and uh, this one doesn't intersect any of the bisectors, so all of it must be contained in the Dirichlet polygon. Um, because otherwise, if, if there were some point not in the Dirichlet polygon, the, the, then the, the shortest curve, this shortest curve, should uh, uh, cross one of the bisectors, yeah, but it crosses it crosses none. Um, so uh, this way we uh, we see that that uh, this 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 smaller compact disk is full is fully contained in uh, uh, in the Wigglesworth polygon. So uh, the Wigglesworth polygon is uh, open. Um, I mean, simply simply. Uh, take the take the the, the non-compact disk contained here, and right? um, or like a you know a throw away the boundary of, 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 of my new smaller disk. Okay. Um, now uh, let's see. Let's let's uh, study a little bit the boundary of um, of the disk poly. So first of all, uh, notice that we we obviously have uh, this this inclusion, this containment, that the the topological closure of the of the Wigglesworth polygon in H in the hyperbolic plane is contained in the intersection of this uh, um, uh, topological closure, and this is simply because each of these uh, each of these sets. You see, you see, this for for uh, for any given uh, small gamma, uh, this is contained in in of course in its closure. Right? Um, so the intersection is contained in the intersection. Right? So uh, we certainly have uh, this inclusion. Uh -huh. and, and now now notice um, uh, this one then then is is uh, you see is described by by. Uh, uh, non-strict inequality right? because this uh, this uh, H uh, is uh, described in terms of this strict inequality the closure then is then uh, described in terms of this non-strict inequality I, I leave it to you as an exercise right um, and then uh, and you see but then but then when you when you consider this one uh, that means that 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 this closure is uh, is the union of H with L. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so actually, this is equal to uh, to this one, right? Uh, so, so when you take someone, so, so when when you take a point in a, in the boundary, right? So, uh, so you see, it, it it must be, you see, it must be in all of these in all of these closures. Uh huh. Uh, but then, in particular, it cannot. It, there must be so one of the edges where it does not uh, where it does not lie. And for that one, uh, we we see then that it's in the corresponding L, right? So this boundary is contained in the in the union of the of the bisectors, right? So so. Um, so we see that the boundary is comprised by by uh, segments or points from the bisectors. Um, okay. Uh, now this one, you see, uh, gamma is countable, mm -hmm. and 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 so so here what what we have here is then a countably many uh, uh, shortest curves. Any given short curve has a, a, a zero hyperbolic area. Another another exercise. Uh -huh. uh, so so this one has a, a area equal to zero. So uh, the boundary of the district polygon has a, a zero hyperbolic area, uh, which is a requirement uh, in order to to uh, be a um, Fundamental domain. Right? It's part of the definition of being a fundamental domain, having a zero hyperbolic area. Okay. 
Uh, now let's see, let's see that uh, uh, the Dirichlet polygon is contained in some fundamental set, who, uh, in turn contained in uh, the topological closure of the Dirichlet polygon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, using the axiom of choice is necessary uh, for each orbit O, uh, we choose a point. Uh, in uh, in the orbit, but 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 we choose it with a, with a, with a specific property that uh, it minimizes the distance to W uh, over the whole O. Right, so we choose a point with the property that 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 for any point or for any other point in the orbit, uh, the distance uh, from P O to W is uh, less or equal than the distance from Z to W. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do it using the, the axiom of choice if necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's, that's our proposed uh, uh, set. Uh -huh. So it's only natural uh, that this is our set, right? Uh, given, given if you just think about the way uh, the digital polygon is defined, right? that's, that's kind of a the, the, the points uh, that are closest to W uh, than to uh, closer to W than to the other points on in the in the orbit of W. Okay. okay. Um, so this is our our, our set, uh, the set of all these uh, uh, POs. Um, and 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 well, the first thing is to note is that. That precisely as, as I just said, the way we define the digital polygon is, uh, is that uh, uh, for for any of its of, of its points, um, the distance from that point to uh, W is less or equal is is strictly less than than the the distance from uh, from uh, that point to 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 any point in the orbit. Of uh, W different from W, right? So, uh, so uh, for um, for uh, sorry, uh, here I have to say uh, it's it, uh, that I use the other description. And I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, so here we use this other alternative description of uh, this uh, half. Plane, because you see this one says that that uh, that uh, that this uh, half plane is the set of points Z um, with with the property that the distance from Z to W is strictly less than the distance uh, from the image of Z to W. Right. So the intersection of all of if, if I take a point in the intersection of all of these so here in the Richelieu polygon. The distance from that point to W is strictly less uh, than the distance from from uh, from uh, any other point in the orbit uh, to W, okay. um, and and this tells me that that uh, for the points in the Dirichlet polygon, I certainly have that the the, the point that I chose uh, for the orbit is is Z itself, mm -hmm. and and this proves that. Uh, that then Z, of course, then is an X. Right? So uh, what I see is this uh, inclusion. So so that's uh, um, that's pretty much uh, that inclusion is pretty much obvious. Uh -huh. um, okay, and now now I want to show that F is contained in the topological closure of the Dirichlet polygon in uh, the hyperbolic plane. So uh, take a point. In F, right? So it's it's uh, uh, the point chosen for certain orbit O, mm -hmm. and then consider the the this uh, this uh, closed open shortest curve that goes from uh, W uh, to the point. Uh -huh. And you see if if this uh, 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 closed open uh, shortest curve crosses some. Uh, um, uh, 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 by sector, um, then of course, of course, it, it, it crosses it. Uh, you know, the point of crossing is not W, right? Because W is not in any, in any of the bisectors. Uh -huh. And then, 
And then, then uh, what happens is that I have a W uh, somewhere, right? and then here is a, 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 a some bisector. Here is a, a gamma of W. Uh -huh. Let's say that around here is P O. Uh, so that this is the this is the the shortest curve uh, that we are uh, considering, um, namely namely uh, this one. Uh -huh. And so you see, then that means that 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 P O cannot is of course not in this uh, half plane. Uh -huh. So its distance to to W is greater than its distance to uh, gamma of W. Mm -hmm. So it this yeah, so I have this uh, inequality. Uh -huh. But you see, of course, this distance is equal to this distance, just applying a, a gamma inverse to, to both points. Uh -huh. And but then you see uh, this point in uh, the orbit of P uh, has distance to W smaller than the distance from uh, p w but this contradicts the way i uh, i chose uh, this uh, p o so uh what do i uh, conclude that well that that this one does not meet any uh, bisector uh -huh. but uh, if it doesn't meet any bisector that is because it is entirely contained in the Dirichlet polygon uh -huh. And, uh, well, then if it's entirely contained in the Dirichlet polygon, well, you see, then, then that means that, that I can, uh, approximate P, uh, with, uh, sequences of points in, uh, well, here, right? And hence, in the Dirichlet polygon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so that means that P is in the, in the topological closure. Right? And this proves, uh, this containment. Uh -huh. So, uh, we see, so what, 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 what have we done so far? Well, we proved that, uh, the digital polygon is a hyperbolically convex fundamental domain for gamma. Mm -hmm. And it only remains to show that uh, it is, um, locally finite. Right? So take, uh, take uh, any compact uh, disk of radio, of positive radius. Um, centered at, uh, at the point stop. Okay, and now let's see what happens if if uh, if, uh, if 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 uh, if an element uh, gamma of the Poussin group makes uh, uh, the uh, makes the, the closure of the Dirichlet polygon meet K. Right? I mean, it, it, it satisfies that the image of the Dirichlet polygon under that element uh, has non empty intersection with uh, with this compact disk um then well then of course then we can take a point here and then taking it kind of as an auxiliary as an auxiliary point uh, we see the following uh, the distance from w to gamma of w uh, is less or equal than the distance from uh, from w w to z and then from from uh, z to gamma of w, right? So triangle inequality. Um, and then, uh, well, this number is then less or equal than than r because z is in this compact disk of radius uh, r. Okay, uh, whereas this uh, number is equal to this number, applying simply uh, gamma inverse to, to both points. Um, okay. Uh, and this is less or equal than, well, this number is uh, less or equal uh, than this number. Why? Because, um, uh, because, because gamma inverse uh, of Z then belongs to this closure. Right? So, so the distance from this point to W is less or equal than the distance from this other point in its orbit to W. But again, this is less or equal than R. Right? So, what do I see? That if this intersection is not empty for, for, for this element of, uh, of the Fuchsian group, uh, 
uh, then the distance from W to gamma of W uh, is less or equal than uh, to R. Right? So that means that uh, that this point in the orbit of W belongs to the the compact disk of radius 2 R uh, centered at W. Um, but again, we uh, we we showed some time ago that the orbit of W does not accumulate in uh, in H. Right, so only finitely many elements of gamma uh, can satisfy that this distance is less or equal than to R. Right? Uh, and this means that only finitely many elements of gamma uh, can have this property. Um, okay, but this, this, this then shows that, uh, that uh, the Dirichlet polygon is a locally finite fundamental domain because uh, any compact subset of H is of course contained in one of these uh, compact disks centered at W. So, and this finishes the proof because that was the only uh, remaining property, local finite. Um, okay, and now let's, uh, let's deduce something um, kind of it's, it's uh, uh, right now it's going to look a little bit like a, a curiosity. Um, but I think it's a, it's a nice uh, consequence, uh, and the consequence is the following. So take take a, take a gamma cycle uh, containing the boundary of the Dirichlet polygon, mm -hmm. uh, and then it, 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 then, then the, the, the proposition uh, says that all the points in this gamma cycle they actually lie on a on a on a hyperbolic circle centered at W, right? So so the distance from each of these points W is the same all throughout the cycle, all throughout the gamma cycle G. Uh, the proof is not hard, so let's let's prove it. Uh -huh. and so so you see it it um, uh, it remains it it, 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 it suffices uh, to 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 show that the distance from Z one to W is equal to the distance from Z two to W. Right? So uh, um, so. Uh, take uh, Z1 and Z2 and, and write uh, Z2, you know, as the, as, uh, the image of Z1 for some uh, uh, elements here. Um, right? I mean, recall that, that a, a gamma cycle is, as a gamma cycle is the intersection uh, of a gamma orbit with the, with the um, hyperbolically convex fundamental domain. Right? So, so they are in particular in the same gamma orbit. So, so of course we can do this. All right, and now consider uh, this uh, closed open shortest curve mm -hmm. from gamma of W to uh, Z2. Mm -hmm. Of course, you see this shortest curve is, of course, uh, you see writing here gamma of Z1 uh, is equal to gamma of this uh, uh, shortest curve. Okay, so that, that, that's uh, because gamma is an isometry. Okay, uh, and well, and this one, this is entirely contained in uh, the the Dirichlet polygon, right? Because Z one is in the boundary and W is in the Dirichlet polygon, uh, so this uh, shortest curve is contained in the Dirichlet polygon. Um, so you see, so this uh, uh, this this closed open shortest curve is uh, contained in uh, in gamma of uh, of the Dirichlet polygon. Uh, which, uh, as we saw in, 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 a, in a preliminary lemma uh, uh, earlier today, uh, is equal to uh, to this Dirichlet polygon center that gamma of W, right? Because uh, gamma is in gamma. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, so you see. So what this means is that. Uh, the distance from Z2 to gamma of W is uh, less or equal than the, than the distance from Z2 to any other point in the, in the gamma orbit of this point. So in particular, the distance from Z2 to gamma of W is less or equal than the distance from Z2 to W. Which is, of course, in the in the orbit of this point. 
Uh, that on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, in Z2 is, uh, is in the, is, uh, in, uh, in the, in the, in the topological closure of the Dirichlet polygon, we also have the, the, the reverse, uh, inequality. So we actually have this equality. In other words, uh, Z2 is equidistant from W and gamma of W. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, and this, uh, this distance is, of course, equal to this distance, uh, applying uh, a gamma inverse, uh -huh. and this uh, is uh, Z1, Z1. Okay, uh, but then we are done, right? The distance from Z2 to W is equal to the distance from Z1 to W. Uh, okay, so, so, for any given uh, cycle containing the, the boundary, uh, all its points lie on a hyperbolic circle with a center dot. Okay. Um, now, uh, also just an observation. Uh, every gamma side is uh, contained in a, in a bisector. Um, so this this is an easy observation. Uh, uh, I leave it to you as an exercise if you don't see it uh, right away. Uh, and uh, to finish uh, uh, today's class, uh, let's uh, do uh, an example, kind of the uh, uh, the classical example, which is uh, the computation of uh, the Dirichlet polygon of uh, PSL2Z uh, with respect to uh, certain points. Mm -hmm. Uh, so PSL to Z. So, so of course it, this is uh, this is kind of the one of the most obvious Fuchsian groups, right? Because um, of course SL to Z is uh, certainly a, a discrete subset of uh, SL to R. So PSL to Z is a discrete uh, subgroup of uh, PSL to R. Uh, Okay, and then consider consider this uh, hyperbolic polygon, uh, and the theorem is that this that this polygon, that this uh, uh, convex polygon, is uh, the Dirichlet polygon for PSL two set centered at any at any uh, uh, point on the imaginary axis uh, above I. Um, where you see, I mean, uh, uh, here this is the this is the, the unit Euclidean uh, circle centered at zero, and these are the vertical lines with the real parts uh, um, um, minus one half and one half. Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's prove it. Mm -hmm. So first of all, consider. Uh, these modus transformations. So this is a translation, a horizontal translation uh, by one, um, and this is a rotation around I, right? hyperbolic rotation. That is a, an elliptic modus transformation. Right? Um, okay. So so first of all, so so what is, what is easy. To see is that that these two uh, vertical uh, lines that I uh, mentioned are well. I actually, I should have uh, maybe taken uh, drew them all the way down here. Uh, that these are L of gamma, so L of uh, of this uh, translation to the right, and uh, L of of uh, gamma inverse, so of the uh, translation unit translation to the left. Um, so, so this uh, uh, that's that 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 uh, easy. It's it's a, it's a it's a good exercise for you to think about it um, to to get uh, used to uh, to these bisectors between uh, between the, your point W and the images, right? And the images uh, on the elements of that. Okay. Uh, and second, second, uh, you see, for this is this is a rotation. 180 degree rotation around I. Um, 
So, so, so it, it is, it is, I would say, quite easy to see that, that this Euclidean uh, semicircle of radius one centered at zero is, uh, is the bisector for, uh, this Mobius transformation. Um, of course, these Mobius transformations are in uh, PSL to uh, Z. That's that's obvious. Uh -huh. And so, so when we intersect uh, the three half planes uh, corresponding to gamma, gamma inverse, and nu, uh, of course, that intersection contains then the the, the Dirichlet polygon right? because. Um, in, in, for the Dirichlet polygon, we only have we 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 take that triple intersection and kind of uh, keep intersecting right, with the with the remaining half plane. So so I would say that this uh, containment is obvious, mm -hmm. and we claim that that's it that that we actually have a quality. Uh, to prove it, we are going to suppose that it is not the case, and we are going to arrive at a at a contradiction. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, suppose that, that, that the digital polygon is properly contained in this, uh, uh, hyperbolic point. Uh, then, then in P, in P, there must be, uh, there must be a pair of distinct points equivalent on their sum element of PSL to Z. Uh -huh. So, uh, so I take them, right? So I take a Z and this, and the, this, this other point. Uh, in P, uh, gamma equivalent, right? So, 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 so there exists, uh, such a matrix in SL to Z. Um, okay. And what we are going to deduce is that, uh, the imaginary part of, uh, this point is strictly smaller than the imaginary part of this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you see, and then, and, 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 but, but that's impossible because, uh, considering then mu a inverse, we can also show then with same argument that the imaginary part of this point is strictly small than, smaller than the imaginary part of this point. Mm -hmm. So that's the contradiction we are going to, uh, to obtain. Mm -hmm. Now, I am, this, you see, the definition of P implies that, that, uh, for this matrix, the lower entries, uh, are not zero. Neither of them is zero. Mm -hmm. And this I leave, uh, I leave you as an exercise. It's not a hard exercise. Uh -huh. Now, uh, Z, and I'm saying that Z is, 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 is in P. So, so, uh, its real part is bounded this way, right? By, uh, by, uh, one half, uh, by minus one, minus one half and, uh, one half. Um, that is, uh, the real part of Z satisfies this inequality. Uh -huh. And, and then you see, consider this inequality. Uh -huh. uh, if, uh, C times D is positive, uh, -huh, uh you can multiply by D, this by C times D and the, the inequality is preserved, right? And we obtain uh, this inequality. And if CD is negative, then, then take this inequality and multiply it by, uh, by, uh, C times D, uh, so that the, the, it gets reversed, uh -huh. But you see, uh, writing, writing, uh, instead of CD minus this absolute value, this, this, uh, reverse, uh, um, Inequality obtained by multiplying by, by CD, which is, which would be negative. Uh, we obtain this inequality. So, uh, regardless of whether CD is positive or negative, uh, I have this inequality. It always holds. Okay. Uh, so it always holds. And then, uh, and then, now uh, let's see. Let's, let's draw some uh, consequences. So this norm square, you see, uh, write, I'm writing z as uh, x plus i y with x and y uh, real. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, the norm the norm square is uh, this norm square uh, and you see c and v are integers so so this norm square is equal uh, to uh, to this sum of uh, squares that's that's obvious i would say uh, expand this square we obtain this uh huh uh, and and rewrite right so c square appears with x square plus y square uh -huh. so 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 i so i uh, i obtain c square times the norm squares of z uh -huh. and then this one you can rewrite uh, this way right because x is the real part of z uh -huh. and uh, this one is here mm -hmm. um okay and now uh I took z in p, so so the norm of z is greater than one. So uh, so this is strictly greater than c squared. Mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, applying this inequality, I obtain that I can I, I see that this is uh, strictly uh, greater than minus absolute value of c d. Mm -hmm. And this number I keep. Uh, okay, and this uh, this can be rewritten this way. Right, so then that that that's uh, that's obvious. Uh -huh. And and you see, uh, this is of course a positive integer, right? Um, uh, C D is not zero right, by the exception. So, uh, so this number is positive, right? Um, it's a positive integer, right? So this is uh, greater or equal than one, but this is strictly greater. So, so this is uh, greater than one. Right? And, and you see, and now compute the imaginary part of mu az. We know it's equal to this. We computed this long time ago. Uh, but because of this inequality, uh, this is strictly smaller than the image of Z. And, and as I said, uh, applying the same argument now for, for this new Z and this new point, uh, we obtain also uh, that the imaginary part of Z is strictly smaller than the imaginary part of mu A of Z. Um, and that is um, a contradiction. Right? So uh, what must be happening? Well, surely here we actually have a quality. Right? So, uh, so we obtain uh, our first computation of a Dirichlet polygon. Uh, and now notice um, gamma vertices. Well, of course, this is a gamma vertex. This is a gamma vertex. But you see here now you have this gamma vertex. Um, Okay, and now, uh, well, I leave you all again as an exercise to, uh, compute, to, to, to decide, uh, which ones are, to decide whether these are, um, accidental, uh, gamma vertices or non-accidental. Um, okay. <laughs>